podcast. Lord Shri Krishna, son of Radha. All pervading personality of God. Meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because he's the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge into the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes, temporarily manifested by reactions of the three modes of nature, appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Pojita Kaitravotra Paramo Nimatsunanam Satam Vedyam Vastava Matra Vastu Ivadam Tapa Trayon Mulanam Srimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Himva Purer Ishvaraha Sajohide Aburidite Tara Krite Vihe Susu Subhistakshanat Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the, wealth, for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God-realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpaturur galitam phalam Yomakad amrita dravya samyutam Hibata Bhagavatam Rasa Malayam Uhur Ahuraska Bhuvibhavakaha O expert and thoughtful man, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire to be Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of C. Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls. Invatam Swakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Erdian Taksto Bhadrani Viduna Tishrahit Satam Sadarajastamo Bhavo Amalo Bayad Lama Lo Bayas Chaya Kama Lo Bayas Chaye Kete Tari Navidam Itvam Satve Prasidati 
To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna who is dwelling in everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and uh, ignorance. And thus, and thus, um, and thus, uh, material lusts and avarice are diminished. Srimad Bhagavatam, Gantaraj, Aki, Jaj, Canto 1, Chapter 13, Text Number 39. Maharaj Yudhisthira said, O godly personality, I'm sorry, Yudhisthira Uvach, Yudhisthira Uvacha, Naham Veda Gatim Pritror. I think we did that yesterday. Sorry. So we're on Text Number 40. Karna Dara Iva Pare Bhagavan Pada Darshaka Ataba Base Bhagavan Narado Unisatama Translation and purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivinanta Swami Prabhupada you are like a captain of a ship in a great ocean, and you can direct us to our destination. Thus addressed the, Garci, the godly personality, Devarsi Narada, greatest of the philosopher devotees, began to speak. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. There are different types of philosophers, and the greatest of all of them are those who have seen the personality of Godhead and have surrendered themselves in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. Among all such pure devotees, the Lord Devarsi Narada is the chief, and therefore he has been described herein as the greatest of all philosopher devotees. Unless one has become a sufficiently learned philosopher by hearing the Vedanta philosophy from a bona fide spiritual master, one cannot be a learned philo philosopher devotee. One must be very faithful, learned, and renounced. Otherwise, one cannot be a pure devotee. A pure devotee of the Lord can give us direction towards the other end of Neshans. Devarsi Narada used to visit the palace of Maharaj Yudhisthira because the Pandavas were all pure devotees of the Lord, and the Devarsi was always ready to give them good counsel whenever needed. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai shiva prabhupada ki jai. So a philosopher is a person who uh, is able to distinguish reality uh, from illusion for the welfare of all. And once one can see the difference between, between reality and illusion, and, one, one, and when one knows what can actually help everyone in their spiritual life, they become a transcendental philosopher who, uh, as it says, Tatvidi Pranipratena Paripastena Sevaya Upadeksyami Te Gyanam Gyaninas Tatvadarshinaha. They become Tatvadarshi, always seeing the truth. <coughs> Therefore, they're never in any way uh, taken off the path or, or, or go off the path of spiritual life. Now, it says here, 
among all the pure devotees of the Lord, Devarsi Narada is the chief, and therefore has been described in here as the greatest of all philosopher devotees. Why? Unless one has become sufficiently learned, a sufficiently learned philosopher by hearing the Vedanta philosophy from a bona fide spiritual master, one cannot be a learned philosopher, devotee. So, Brahma himself is Narada Muni's uh, guru. Is the, the succession begins from Brahma, goes to Narada, and then to Vyasa, and like that, continues. So, uh, and Brahma is, is, was instructed directly by Krishna himself. So, therefore, Narada Muni has heard the Vedanta philosophy from a bona fide spiritual master. Therefore, he becomes a learned philosopher, devotee. So, Prabhupada continues, he says, one must be very lear faithful, learned, and renounced. Otherwise, one cannot be a pure devotee. So these three words, faithful, learned, and renounced. Renounced means one gives up all material activities and only engages in spiritual activities to please Krishna. So, Therefore, this, this verse in the Bhagavad Gita, in the fourth chapter, it says that it gives a definition of one who is a faithful devotee. Shadava lapate jnanam tatpara sangatendriya. Jnanam. Jnanam lava param gang. Param lava. Uh, achiren adigachati. I'm sorry, jnanam ladva param santim achiren adigachati. A faithful man who is de dedicated to transcendental knowledge and who subdues his senses is, to is eligible to achieve such knowledge and having achieved it, he quickly attains the supreme spiritual peace. So, uh, subduing the senses means that one becomes renounced. One uses his senses only in Krishna consciousness. That is real renunciation. One renounces sense gratification. In fact, when one does that, they develop transcendental characteristics. What are those transcendental characteristics? Well, that is, again, explained in Bhagavad Gita. Uh, first of all, machita matkata pranak bodhyantas that is, Prabhupada, uh, Krishna says, the thoughts of my devotees dwell in me. Their lives are fully devoted into my service and they derive great satisfaction and bliss from always enlightening one another and conversing about me. So these are characteristics of pure devotees engage themselves fully in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. Their minds cannot be diverted from the lotus feet of Krishna. Their talks are solely on the transcendental subjects. The symptoms of the pure devotees are described in this verse. Specifically, they're 24 hours daily engaged in glorifying the qualities and pastimes of the Supreme Lord. Their hearts and souls are constantly submerged in and they take pleasure in discussing him with other devotees. So that is uh, number one qualification. And then Advaita Sarvabhutana Maitra Karana Evacha Nirmama Nirahankara Samadukha Sukha Syami Santusta Satatam Yogi Yatatma Dritanishchaya Mayarpita Mano Budir Yomad Bhakta Same Priya. Krishna says to Arjuna that one who is not envious but is a kind friend to all living entities, who does not think himself a proprietor and is free from false ego, who is equal in both happiness and distress, who is tolerant, always satisfied, self-controlled, and engaged in devotional service with determination, his mind and intelligence fixed on me, such a devotee of mine is very dear to me. So this is symptoms of a pure devotee engaged in pure devotional service. These are the transcendental qualities of a devotee. Uh, 
the devotee never becomes his enemy's enemy. He thinks, this person is acting as my enemy due to my past own past deeds, so it's better to suffer than to protest. This is also explained in Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th Canto, 14th chapter, 8th verse, Tate nukam pam susamik samano bunjana evat makritam vipakam. Whenever a devotee is in distress or has fallen into difficulty, he thinks that the Lord's mercy, that he's receiving the mercy of the Lord. And, and he thinks, thanks to my past deeds, I should suffer far, far more than I am actually suffering. So by the mercy of the Lord, I am not getting all the punishment I am due. I am just getting a little by the mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So Prabhupada explains, therefore, because of this mentality, the devotee is calm, quiet, and patient, and despite all types of distressful conditions. So, and the devotee is also always kind to everyone, even to his enemy. And he does not attach much importance to the material body and, uh, and uh, to the pains and troubles pertaining to the body because he knows I'm not this body, I'm a spirit soul. And therefore he is satisfied, which whatever comes by, uh, let's say, by the grace of the Lord. In other words, the, dev the pure devotee does not attach attempt to achieve something with great difficulty. Therefore, he always feels joyful and happy. He's able to follow the rules and regulations of Krishna consciousness happily without feeling any discomfort because he's adopted the culture of Krishna consciousness as his way of life or her way of life. And the devotee remains always uh, and control the senses and determine to follow the instructions of the spiritual master. So therefore, the devotee is never swayed by false arguments because no one can lead him from a fixed determination of devotional service. So these are qualities of someone who has become uh, a pure devotee of Krishna. So uh, unless, Prabhupada says, unless one has become a sufficiently learned philosopher by hearing the Vedanta philosophy from a bona fide spiritual master, one cannot be a learned philosopher devotee. So he says, you become like that by hearing the Vedanta philosophy from a bona fide spiritual master. And then uh, Narada was regularly visiting the palace of Maharaj dear. Why? Because the Pandavas, including Maharaj Yudhisthira, were all pure devotees. And therefore, Devarsi Narada, uh, the, the greatest philosopher of, of Vedic knowledge, was ready to give them good advice and good counsel whenever needed. And that's the other thing. When we become uh, renounced and surrendered completely to Guru and Krishna, then we're in a position to always receive good counsel, good advice, so that we don't make mistakes. We're all going to make mistakes, but the good counsel is there to rectify the mistakes and not make them again. So that is uh, the ultimate mercy of uh, associating with pure devotees. Hare Krishna. Adi ki jai. Any questions? academic knowledge. Well, you learn from uh, two things. One is directly and one is vicariously. 
vicariously means you learn from other people's experience and you learn from your own experience. So if, if you're in your life, your experience is regularly hearing the Vedic knowledge from bona fide uh, gurus and chanting the holy name of Krishna, you begin to have practical experience. What does that mean? Well, everyone is always faced with different challenges in life. If you have faith that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and not, be, not waver in that faith, then through life's experiences, you will always see the guiding hand of Krishna and the mercy of Krishna's devotees. So that's practical experience by which you can go through all difficult situations without becoming confused because your faith in Krishna remains very strong by virtue of the association that you have. And then secondly, you learn from the experience of others. So all these st stories of great devotees in the Bhagavatam and the Mahabharata and the Ramayana, they're all about uh, persons who succeeded in Krishna consciousness and persons who did not succeed in Krishna consciousness and the reasons why. So you learn from, from other people's experience. So you, you have this two-pronged uh, way of keeping your faith in, in Krishna. You learn through your own experience how to always uh, have faith in Krishna and his goodwill and be patient and kind and gentle and uh, loving and in your relationships. Everyone benefits from genuine and affectionate relationships with devotees. Everyone benefits. The person who is seeking that association and the person giving that association. And through that association, one has experience that maintaining their faith in Krishna is what may, will sustain them through all situations of life. And then you, hear, you, you, you have the experience of other great devotees uh, that you know and, and also who are described in the scriptures and how they have also uh, you know, prevailed in the most difficult situations without losing faith. In fact, their faith gets stronger. Any other questions? Hare Krishna. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna.